The word of God is alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow. And it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God-breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. That the man of God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that endeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth and accurately handling the word of truth. As we are continuing from the previous tape, idealness among God's people is always dangerous. It can make them an easy prey of such harmful habits as gossip and false finding. And our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ charged to us eyes, occupy it till I come. The Christian life has been described as running a race. And Hebrews 12, 1 says, Let us laying aside every weight and sin, which so easily entangles us, but rather run with endurance the race that lies before us, looking steadfastly unto Jesus, our, our Savior. We see here four things needful for winning the race, wherewith we have to run well, but why we need to stop simply as per Galatians 5, 7. The first qualification is to lay aside every unnecessary un in encumbrances, and this requires defining our priorities. Unnecessary encumbrances have been ample in the mind of each and every pastor, far less it couldn't be in the mind of the believers in the church. He doesn't have a priority rightly defined. For a pastor, teacher, or exegesis should be isagogical categorization of the subject with the dispensing technique of dispensations as number one priority. His work is to show forth the love by how, but rather in, by inculcating the word of the Lord. That's it. Through exegesis, through isagogics, and categorization of the study. He doesn't have any other method. He doesn't have any other procedure. He doesn't have any other techniques. He needs to define the priorities very clearly. And whereas a believer, what is your number one priority? Not to be indulged in the emotional-based worship services, the defunct spiritual gifts, but rather to be getting along and looking along to the priority of Bible doctrine should be your indulgence. Your priority should be corrected. Your priority should be absolutely changed. But today, the pastor-teacher's priorities are not straight. Then how can the congregation have a priority which could be straight? The second criteria is to be aware of the sin that easily besets you. For sin has a stupefying effect, and you cannot win a race if you are sleepy. That's why arise awake. The ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, has been given to us. So to be aware of the sin, we need to use rebound and get back into the fellowship. And after getting back, your perseverance, your motivation and your momentum, that is what the third one, to run with patience and endurance. As an obstacle course which has been there, you have to go as an mandatory or which is a binding firm that you have to endure that race with patience and with endurance and number four to look unto Jesus who for the joy set before him endured the cross even for the joy that has been given for us when we reach the maximum glorification of Christ we have to endure it by becoming a winner, winner believer by executing the protocol plan of God the three adult stages of this unique spiritual life spiritual self-esteem or spiritual autonomy and number spiritual maturity so this is the true weight of the source of power for us, the power of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, because it makes us to be having a naked faith and to wait upon Jehovah, because who shall wait upon Jehovah shall renew their strength and shall run and never tire. And if you're not waiting upon the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ for your work to be done, you're running a toilsome run, which is not going to yield you any fruit. So ours is an obstacle course, and we have to go through that. The course of this unique spiritual life, the three stages of the subtle spiritual man, spiritual self-esteem or spiritual autonomy, and then by spiritual maturity. Dear brethren, ponder over these things as we continue tomorrow. With our headboard and eyes closed, the closing moments being dedicated to those who are here without Christ, without hope, and without eternal life. In order to be turning to Lord God the Father, that we believe upon Christ. That is the moment that is of official the eternal truth. The eternal truth for us for very simple, believing Christ, you shall be saved. And whereas for the believers, the great man it is to search the scriptures diligently under the mental ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, by using rebound. And for the passive teachers, the great man it is to, is to herald the word, which is kerosothon logan. The diamond from my witnesses being indwelling trinity, followed by Bible in our hands, which is also a diamond from my witnesses, 
followed by each and every believer who could hear to our tape. If there are no hearers, do not worry. Besides nature, the entire angelic host will be our diamatrona witnesses and we do not worry about the softness of the people, the critics of the people, and the comments of the people, but rather we are here to tell what the word of the Lord tells and we are here to occupy till our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ comes for the work that has been given to us and run a race not to be tiring, but rather be resting upon Jehovah and renovation of our thinking by the renewal power of God, the Holy Spirit, as we use rebound within a fraction of a second whenever we sin, we need to execute this unique spiritual life. The mystery doctrine of the church age is the source for this unique spiritual life. So which way, dear brother, only one over you decide, we shall continue tomorrow. Father, we are grateful for the privilege that was given to fellowship with you through the word. And we pray that Lord God, the Holy Spirit will understand us in these things and make it to us a blessing and challenge our in Lord. Father, we ask in Christ's name, Father. Amen.